we are back! Take Flight Squad Season 3, Gunny Gumby Situation Pour on the bottom, on my left or my right, whatever which screen you are seeing, DKBX Jets. Man, fellas, Season 3, it's been a while. I remember back um, in Season 1, 2022, I was like, I had this idea, I wanted to do a show, I'm like, DK, me and you have um, definitely collabed before. Gunny, you collabed on with me and my boy Liam on another show. I'm like, you know what? I just I got to keep this together. I really like you guys a lot. And let's do a show. Now it's season three, and I'm super excited. I'm super excited to be back with you guys. And um, this is going to be a crazy season more than ever. Fellas, how we do it? DK, we'll start with you. Yo, I'm doing I'm doing really good. You know, we joke about it all the time. Draft season is uh, <laughs> our Super Bowl. Uh, this is our little playoff window right here. So um, it's been fun. I got a couple. I shouldn't say a couple. I'm ready to wrap up, uh, you know, final mock draft stuff. All the little final tidbit free agency rumors and stuff are always interesting. Um, so it's good. You know, no drama, no Aaron Rodgers VP chat and all of that nonsense. So <laughs> Thumbs up. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. What about you, Gunny? I mean, you said it best, man. This is our time of year, Jets fans. This is the time of year where we can come together and live in the world of hope and dreams, right? Like, you're seeing what the offseason has brung. I think Joe Douglas has done an outstanding job in, in building this roster. Um, I'm not going to lie, man. I did not think in February when the season ended, well, for us back in November when the season ended, that we were going to see this kind of a – just ridiculous improvement across the offense before the draft. I didn't think it was feasible. I really thought the Jets were going to have to go ahead and go into the draft and utilize every pick on the offensive line and then maybe a wide receiver and go ahead and build that way. But Joe D said, hold my beer. Uh, look what I can do. And he has since added all pro talent to the offensive line, a, an Iron Man and Morgan Moses, who's a demon in the freaking run game. Um, an up and coming young stud and Simpson, man. And then we've got Mike Williams as the wide receiver to to our Garrett Wilson. So the Batman to our Robin, all that good stuff. So it's it's crazy to me because ultimately we're looking at this roster. We are not even in the draft yet. And I'm, I'm I don't know if it's just me, but as a Jets fan, like I have no clue which direction Joe Douglas is going to go because he's done an incredible job filling every need the Jets had uh, in the offseason via free agency. So I'm excited, man. I'm pumped to be here. Draft is in a couple of weeks. Can't wait to go ahead and see how that goes down. Agree with everything you're saying. Three things, guys. So DK, me, are going to be on Gunny Shandle for draft night. You'll see all three of us, Nick Shine and Jigga Man Porto is going to be there. Uh, first annual for Gunny Gummy Situation Report. Um, I, me and Nick, we did something last year. I know Gunny did some things last year. DK, I know you did some things last year. And I know Nick said on your show, I uh, know his show last night, correct, Gunny, on his show, you guys um, promoted it, that it's going to be right. all together. And I, I can't wait. I love stuff like this. I, it's a holiday for me. I watch draft day oh, like yeah. two hours before, and then I get all kinds of snacks. I cook, and I'm just, I, I got a TV now next to me. I'm going to be glued right here all night long. I know, Gunny, it's kind of a thing for you, too. I know, DK, for you as well. Um, with the offseason moves, guys, I know we, we we talk about how they have improved the roster. There's a lot of durability on that offense, too. Like, they got to stay healthy. If they don't stay healthy, it's going to come down fast. In the first round at 10, we'll start with Gunny. What do you think they should do at 10? Trade down, move up, stay there. Um, listen, I'm I'm definitively team stay there when you take the best offensive weapon available, whether it's going to be a guy. Let me rephrase that. <laughs> let me rephrase that. <laughs> I'm definitively uh, stay at pick 10 and you take the best offensive lineman available or the best wide receiver available. And by best, I mean, if it's a Dunze or if somehow neighbors falls to us, you take them. Um, mm -hmm. Otherwise, the move is offensive tackle. If the offensive tackles are gone that we feel like is valued there, A, J.D., go ahead and trade back. Let's see if we can recoup a second-round pick um, and go with one of the, the later prospects potentially on the offensive line. So for me, I'm, I'm team offensive line, um, but I'm also team Adunze. Uh, I really started to really I, – I, I, let me be Amen. honest, man. I got this like uh, – that. I really started liking this dude. No more and more tape I watch about this kid, man. I really mm -hmm. believe his ceiling is potentially one of the highest in terms of the wide receivers in this draft. Um. So, yeah, so if they go the Adunze route, I'm going to be ecstatic. If they go the offensive tackle route with one of the top guys, I'm going to be ecstatic. Uh, 
the after that for me, the 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 clear move is to trade back. Mm-hmm. And uh, Salah, if you're watching this show, uh, Joe D, do me a favor, lock him in a closet and don't get a defensive guy at ten. Please God. lock him in a closet. Don't do it. Just God. don't do it. Please don't do it. DK, what do you think, brother? Yeah, man, I'm a. Uh... I think I'm strongly in the stance of trading down. Uh, the more that I look at mm-hmm. how the, um, I think you can go down as far as five to eight spots is maybe the latest, and you can still walk away with what many people would probably consider either left tackle one or two or right tackle one or two, right? And I look at names like Fuaga that I think can drop lower than people would expect mm-hmm. in that range. Um uh what's the other guy's name Fautanu oh. out there uh i know x factor loves jc latham yeah uh, i'm a big latham example. guy as well yeah. yeah and then if not if you have that level of confidence in the offensive line right then when you talk about that second ish tier of tackles you can walk away with guys that have the elite athletic ability and the upside that you hope uh, you know, Keith Carter can kind of mold in the background behind having a guy like uh, Tyron Smith and, and Morgan Moses, if you want to go like a Tyler Guyton route. So I would love the ability to go out there and pick up that second rounder uh, if you do go back that far or even an additional third and you just want to move up. Um, I think it's going to be this will be the draft class that I judge Joe Douglas off the hardest, right? Assuming we have yeah. a successful season after this, because this is going to build that next core wave. And considering the, our needs and what we identify in terms of tackle and wide receiver, it should be hard as hell to miss in this class. You have wide receivers that have starting ability all the way into the fourth, fifth round. You have tackles that maybe not uh, may not be starting capable right out the gate. But you set yourself up to where you have that that you know uh, that that time to actually develop them and get them on the field in year two. So it's hard to miss. If we don't come away from this with at least two or three future starters, I think that's going to be a huge concern. But trade down is where I'm at. I I, I agree with you guys both. I'm a, I'm a firm believer either staying at ten or trading down. I don't want to m- trade up. I think we'll be fine. This deep draft for quarterback, it's a deep draft for a line, it's a deep draft for wide receivers. The stuff that we need, even get a linebacker in later rounds, even get a quarterback maybe in the later rounds, but that much, much, much later, like not not right away. But I think for me, it's it's going to get to that point where teams are going to be desperate to move up. I'm looking at the Rams and Bills. I think the Bills, I think people, their cap is messed up and we get that. But they still have a lot of draft picks, and I think if anyone's going to want to trade down, like if we're going to trade down, they're going to jump up. I'm looking at the Bills. I do think that Douglas, this is this is a make or break. This year, next year is our window to win a Super Bowl, and with the durability that would still have a lot of injury issues, even on the even on the offense, even the players that we brought in, we still need backups. Because let's be honest, that turf is still going to become an issue still. And with everything going going on in, in the offseason, everything going on right now, there is a high. I don't know if anybody looked at Aaron Rodgers' interview. I forgot. It was like a couple days ago, maybe last week. He was yeah. heartbroken. I felt that. Yeah. I felt that. I was like, oh, my God, that that kicked me in the heart. And I'm like, man, everything. But he, I I even forgot hard knocks. We had hard knocks that year. We had our own stuff going on. And then oh, it. I, can't, I don't know if any of us can go through that again. I can't go through that again. So I'm glad you brought up my bad. Go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. I'm done. I'm I'm glad you brought up that um that freaking Aaron Rodgers interview. Uh, first and foremost, I don't know who who the one flight, whatever that guy, the whoever those guys are. I don't yeah, know. I great interview, great, great host, host. great was. interview. Don't know how they got Aaron Rodgers, but yo, big ups to them because that that was a, a great get. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Um, but you watch that interview, man, and if you haven't seen it and you're a Jets fan, you're missing out. It, it, you can see how distraught the man was. He he didn't just think like, oh, it, he was done for, for now. He thought he was done for the forever. He thought his career ended. And for him, the most difficult thing was going out like that, to go ahead, get an opportunity to go ahead and bring potentially some hope to this organization, to this fan base, letting the fans down, letting the team like, – like he really showed a genuine freaking – um, sadness and frustration with the fact that he let so many of us down. So for me, if you weren't a fan of Aaron Rodgers before, then it is what it is. But I, I think this is the kind of, of of interview you give as you're preparing for a 
hell of a comeback season. Like, I, I think this is a yeah. man on a mission. Uh, I think the way he's been off the grid, it seems like, right, to me, spells of an individual that's back there. Like, just kick, kick off the Rocky workout montage, right, the training montage. I feel like that's what Aaron Rodgers' mindset has been based off of that interview. This is a guy right now grinding to go ahead and get back here to be an asset to this the talented roster that he currently has around him. Arguably the most talented roster he's ever had around him, and we haven't even gotten to the draft yet. So I'm excited to see what Aaron Rodgers brings to the table, and this is why, to me, it's so important for us to keep that man upright by any means necessary. DK, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I'm firmly in the same boat as uh, Aaron Rodgers. Uh, his personality is so weird. I don't want to say he's fiery, right? But when you see some of these interviews and you get some of these speeches, like you you can kind of see that almost like war speech passion uh, that will come out yeah. from on the field. And it makes sense why you've seen, even though we have a lot of the younger guys like Garrett and Sauce, you can see why so many people in the building are clamoring around him. It's not just the success that he's had um, and his ability on the football field. He's literally able to go out there and galvanize this entire facility from uh, executives all the way down to, uh, you know, the, the guys that we actually have on the roster. So I'm excited for him. Honestly, I think between, you know, he's been hearing for two years now without being able to really prove it last year that, you know, he's still falling off the bandwagon and <laughs> I've seen a lot of guys commenting about their concerns, you know, con talking about us Jets fans um, that, you know, he may be washed. We're not getting, you know, Gunny mentioned it on uh, his podcast. We don't need the MVP Aaron Rodgers, right? It, like that expectation should be out. If we get him, cool. I'm pretty sure that means we're, we're going to be getting ourselves a Super Bowl. But realistically, if you want to talk about like Aaron Rodgers floor and kind of everything I'm seeing from the interview and everything that we got from his rehab last year. Mm -hmm. Right. He, if you look at Alex Smith, right. Alex Smith towards the end of his career and basically yes. his entire career, he's been a game manager. Right. And he mm -hmm. did it at a high, high level. Aaron Rodgers will be the elite game manager at worst. At best, he's going to be out there flinging deep bombs left and right to Garrett and Mike Williams. Right peppering people all throughout the you know middle of the field so when i look at it i it, it's we don't have all the pieces like we did last year with all of the breaks that we're getting and how the schedule got set up and stuff at least from what we know right now but all of the intangible pieces that we need seem like they're in place for aaron Rodgers to have a a really successful year for us so i'm super excited i like I will stop being nervous once we get to snap five <laughs> and I still see him out there on yes. the field. Yes. <laughs> but uh, Maybe for now, I mean, steps. yeah, I think the arrow's pointing, you know, as far up as it can get. This is, I don't know about you guys, but at least since I've been paying attention, like deeply enough to Jets football, I can't remember a better off season on paper for us where we plugged as many holes and we've done it with as many high caliber players as we have. And we still have draft pieces without clear, obvious needs. And those draft pieces being high with, you know, us having the 10th pick. So. I, I, I agree. And also I just, I want to touch on Smith real quick from the Cowboys. I know he's got a lot of injury issues and that does kind of freak me out a little bit, but man, he is a top three at his position and the price we got for him. I'm still, I still think about that like all day. Like how the frick did he do that? 6.5 mil. I mean, I'm just, I, the dude just worked wonders with that. And, and, and how he just construct this offensive line. If, if Beckton comes back, he comes back. If we get McGovern back, I wouldn't prefer more of that. But the way that he handled it with Simpson, Moses, and Smith, and even a familiar face with Smith, I mean, sorry, with Moses, because I didn't want to let Moses go. I understand he wanted the bag, and I get that. But I always loved Moses. And now that he's back, it's like, man, if these guys can just stay healthy, oh, my God, it could be unbelievable. But we're Jets fans. We always expect that, the worst. Um, like, it, <laughs> I don't think people had it in perspective enough, right? Um, Robert Hunt got – uh, what a uh, north of a hundred million on like four yeah. years, something yeah. like that. So you're talking about 20 million for one guy. We got three potential pro bowl to all pro caliber play. No, let's not go that far. Tyron Smith's an all pro caliber guy. Morgan Moses can play at a pro bowl level. And then you have a guy on the rise in John Simpson, but nonetheless, three guys you feel really, really good about that. Nobody really questions starting status for $13 million collectively guaranteed. <laughs> Yeah, it's insane. Yeah. 
It's we haven't insane. had anything. Unheard like of. It's unheard of. It's unheard what of. What did Tremaine get from us? And that was like, what, seven, eight years ago? He got like 15, yeah. 16 from million dollars. Right? From the Rams. Like, yeah. Yeah. It, it, I I I really feel like there's there's got to be something that Joe Douglas has on on some of these on these uh, on some of these like uh, GMs when it comes to the trades too, the Hassan Reddick trade. Like if we can even yeah. look at that, you're talking about a a third rounder next year. No, I'm sorry, no, two no, years from now. Yes, yeah, two years, two years, from, years from, from now. Yeah, yeah. And and he has to go ahead and not only get double digit sacks but play uh, 69 per 68 percent of the snaps. Yeah. He's not playing sixty eight percent of the snaps. Like that's that's not going to happen on this roster with this rotation. And they'll like to play uh play football on the defensive end on the defensive right. line. So, in essence, it's a third rounder, and you upgraded dramatically from what we had in a Bryce Huff. And again, love Bryce Huff. I know he was he was a loss. Yeah. He's a homegrown talent, and not not yeah. to knock the dude, but let's be honest. Like he, we're hoping that Bryce Huff can become who Hassan Reddick is. That's the goal. The goal is for Bryce Huff to one day become Hassan Reddick. Um, to get him in at, at 28, 29 years old, uh, only a couple years older than freaking Bryce Huffman for the year. You're right. Again, you're talking about a team that's really here right now about going all in. And I understand where a lot of the stuff is coming from about like, potentially trading up. But like you just said, DK, like we, we've got the number 10 overall pick and there's really no glaring holes on our roster. Like how often does that happen for a team to be picking in the top 10 and you look at their roster and you sit there and you're like, I don't, really there's not a glaring hole that must be filled like there's this is literally going to be a, an added weapon hopefully for Aaron Rodgers um to go ahead and stay upright and attack defenses all season take us to the promised land and not only that it's with with the way that this is that this is all going I even the backups that we got to be a little bit concerned about but it's I'm looking at McDonald now like make now we want McDonald to be that Reddick. I know we want Huff to be that Reddick, but in the situation that we're in, I would love I would love to even have Reddick. I don't, I don't care if he's fourteen point five million. I I don't care about that anymore. Reddick is one of the best at his positions. Even last year, you can go back to his Cardinal days with 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 Bolden on the on the other side. So this came in at such a good time. And now we're hoping McDonald's going to be at that next level with that, even with the rotation. I mean, you can just see all the behind the scenes. Like, he's in. He's locked in. I love Sauce Gardner. Him and Sauce Gardner dabbing it up with the behind the scenes. I love – that's what you want, and that's what I'm hoping things will just continue to go on, man. I, I love that trade. Yeah, I don't think – I. it's always curious to me when people are chatting with me about it because I don't – objectively i don't know how you can consider it a loss uh you got a player that's older yes but he's literally in every way a more proven product uh than what you got out of bryce huff consistent performance over the last four years not only that it's not like his sack numbers um uh because you know as they like to say all sacks don't come equal it's not like he was just out there getting covered sacks the man's a legitimate fourth quarter closer. Like if the game's yeah. on the line and you need somebody to go out there and make it happen, he's literally replacing what Bryce Huff did. And we know that he can do it more consistently. So uh, putting that on top of it's basically the same situation with Bryce Huff anyways, where even if we lose him and it's just a one year rental, you're getting probably a third round compensatory pick for it. Like it, it's chess moves. Joe Douglas, I, I think, and this, you know, kind of flows back into draft talk a bit, but a lot of the moves that Joe Douglas are doing to me doesn't scream, um, you know, this is a, a, a one year view. Um, you don't go in and I get it. It's a 2026 pick, but you don't try to start thinking about 2026 compensatory pick formula stuff, uh, which I think he is highly considering in a, in a situation like this. But none of his moves scream. I'm only looking at this year. I think you still see a potential extension for Morgan Moses uh, to at least give us a, a two year window with him. John Simpson is probably going to I wouldn't be surprised if he gets an extension by by mid year, uh, potentially if he does really, really well. I think we've seen a similar situation with uh, JFM. Granty was with us for an additional year, but it's not like he had a huge role. Um, so I know a lot of people and this, uh, this kind of flows into the question I have for you guys, the, the trade up piece that I'm hearing a lot of people talking about how much of a 
I guess one, how likely do you guys think it would be that Joe Douglas trades up to try to, you know, put the cherry on top of this offseason and go get a guy? And I'll leave it up to you guys who you would consider trading up for. But how likely is it? And uh, would you consider that more of a risk, assuming that we're going to be diving a lot into our, our current draft capital? Mm. Gutty, give me go first. Yeah. yeah, man, for me, like if if we're making that trade up, um, there was a moment where I thought maybe MHJ would be the guy that I wanted to trade up for. Right. But yeah. in, in all actuality, the more and more I look at it, I, I think it's neighbors. I think neighbors yeah. would be the guy that I would want the Jets to trade up for. This guy's a freak athlete. Um, he's a yak machine. Like the dude could do it all, run all the routes. And I think he'd be an incredible compliment to allow the Jets to go ahead and have him, Williams, um, and of course, Garrett, uh, Garrett Wilson on the freaking field at the same time. So it, it's, it's shocking because I love MHJ. I, I think that like he's, his floor is potentially, you know, a pro bowl caliber wide receiver. And he could be one of those all pro guys for the next several years, but there's just something about freaking neighbors that's truly exciting to me in regards to how he would complement this roster, right? How he would complement this this offense. So I, I think that would be the move, man. Otherwise, you stick at ten and and you you hope a Dunze falls to you or one of the one of the offensive linemen that you that you like. Um, yeah. But I I think the more I think about it, man, I don't know if. So, okay, on the one side, I keep asking myself, why did Joe Douglas not utilize one of next year's capital to go ahead and be done with the, the Hassan Reddick thing? And, and it's a wrap, right? Boom, covered. Next year's third can become a second. It's over, right? But he did that for the two years later where it can become that, which means he still has the full complement of picks for next year to move around mm -hmm. in this draft. And that's where I think, like, there's a move coming. I don't know if it's him potentially trying to move back into the second round uh, or maybe moving up to get one of those elite playmakers. But to me, it makes a lot more sense to stay put and grab one of your guys if they fall to you. If you get yourself uh, an alt who apparently is now falling down draft boards for God knows what reason, you can get yourself an alt. You can get yourself a freaking Adunze, a Fashani. Yeah. Um, I think I think you run up to the freaking podium and, and you you're good. You've literally just added a, a premier piece to your art, to your offense for the next five to ten years or trade back and acquire more picks. And you throw more dart uh, darts at the board trying to go ahead and get as many weapons around Aaron Rodgers for a very affordable price. Nice, nice. I, I think for I think for me, I would jump up and I, I always said it was going to be Harrison Jr. for me if I was going to do that. But now I'm looking more at neighbors. I have just been watching a lot of film on him. And I just I like how clean he looks fresh, clean the routes. I, it's so nasty. It's just nasty. And I, I love it. Nasty in a good way. But I'm I think for me, it's all neighbors. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Because I think all all potentially I'm like, you know, maybe 10 percent he could fall. Maybe I doubt it, but maybe you never know. And then a Dunze falls. I want a Dunze there at ten if we can't. And then just trade, just trade back. But how many times has Joe Douglas traded back when he's when he's been here? I don't. He hasn't really traded back before. So it, it's going to be very interesting. Either he sticks there, but yeah, those are my two players. Uh, curious too. How do you guys think? Because I, I know we kind of touched on how he's uh, <laughs> literally just putting GMs in a bind when it comes to a lot of these player trades. I, I can't remember the last one we really lost unless you want to go deep in the bag and say like uh, Blake Cashman outproduced what we expected, but he was finally healthy for the Texans. And then you're right. also putting them with D'Amico Ryan. So um, hmm. I wouldn't say necessarily unexpected, but it is a late round draft pick that's kind of blossomed for him. Comparing that to the draft though, uh, uh, Gino, to your point, we haven't seen him really make trades back. We've seen him make trades up, but then we've also questioned that a lot, like ABT for the two thirds yeah. would have been better crazy. off us trying to do stuff like that. So uh, would you guys be confident in him trying to make a trade up? We're actually targeting the right player. Uh, I, I'm out there. I, I don't think there's anything that's going to change my mind. If, if there's a trade up, let it come later in the draft. Um, because from a lot of what I've seen from people, I don't necessarily agree. A lot of the analysts and stuff out there don't necessarily love the day three guys. Um, it's still part of the COVID um, players that are coming on. So you're getting a lot of those fifth year guys, uh, super seniors. I think they're calling like the six year dudes, uh, stuff like that. So <laughs> I, 
I think there's still a lot of value there, especially because in the first two to three rounds, you're going to see a lot of guys get pushed down. But uh, what are you thinking? Do I feel confident about him moving up? I mean, if 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 he makes the move to come up and he grabs himself a, a guarantees himself an alt MHJ or neighbors, I don't think anybody who's a Jets fan can be mad about that. I think all those moves show not only a win now mentality, but uh, also providing security for the long run, for the long run. So uh, if if he was going to do it, I think it's one of those three guys. I don't think he would trade up for a Dunze per se. I think a Dunze is right there in that cushion of that eight to tenth, ten uh, tenth overall pick. Uh, there's a very good chance I think he falls to number ten. But yeah, for a neighbors MHJ or an Alt man, I again MHJ Alt. I think those guys are potentially the safest picks in this draft. I think that those guys a uh, floor is going to be a a quality NFL starter, and I think they have all pro potential uh, over the next ten years. But it wouldn't surprise me in the least bit if you see if you see neighbors or a Dunze being the individual all pros based off of you know annual performances. Like those guys can definitely be um, home run threats. So it's it's an interesting draft, man. Because again, yeah, it's so deep, especially at the the wide receiver position. Offensive line, I don't think it's as deep as everybody keeps saying. I think that the offensive line, once you go ahead and get through the first round uh, prospects. You're taking some gambles, right? It's, it's, the gambles are, are a lot higher. Uh, so for me, that's why I'm so keen on going offensive line and and taking a wide receiver in the third. Because, again, like you were just saying, because there's so much talent at the wide receiver position in this draft, some great guys are going to drop into the third. Could you imagine grabbing freaking one of the top three freaking offensive uh, linemen in this draft? And then in the third, you get yourself a guy like a freaking, I don't know, uh Malik Washington, right? I know he's yeah. going to be more of a fourth round guy, but I love Malik Washington, man. I think the guy would be an incredible slot receiver. Uh, a little muscle hamster, bro. He gives me a lot of Steve Smith vibes. I like the guy a lot. And I think he could right. be there for you in the third. And and that would be one hell of a compliment to a Garrett Wilson or Mike Williams, uh Tyler Conklin, and then you add him in the fold. So again, for me, I, I want to go the offensive line route, but I will not be upset if he goes after one of these top three wide receivers. And if that means I'm trading up to grab one, then listen, you're putting more weapons around Aaron Rodgers. I'm I'm in. I'm I'm 100 here for it. Uh, but you gotta if you do that, then you're gonna have to go get another freaking lineman in the free agency. And I think uh, Bakhtari should definitely be that guy you bring in to kind of supplement that yeah. left side. We might not get a full season out of Tyron Smith, but we could potentially pull off 17 games with Tyron Smith and Bakhtari. And then Tyron Smith yeah. missed the playoff game in his career, so have him ready for the playoffs will be a nice nice um, uh, chef's kiss. And it's really nice because in the third and fourth round we got it. We got one pick in the top in, in the top eleven, and then even two, two, um, two, two. Uh, what, do, what do they call it in the seventh round now? Uh, compliment, compete, uh, what is it? compensatory. Yeah, oh, Chris, compensatory picks. Yeah, I, I, I kind of like. I'm kind of interested to see what we do. It might be exciting. It might not. Could be a future something. I doubt it. Who knows? But I think it's kind of cool. I don't know. But third, but third and fourth round, you can still get guys like Michigan's wide receiver Roman Wilson. I really like him a lot, and I do like Washington as well. And I've been, and I, and I know DK mentioned this in one of our shows, uh, like a couple months ago about um, uh, Walker, right? North Carolina Walker, DK, you like him a lot. I'm open to that. Yeah, but do you think he might, my guy. Do you think sure. he could be in the third round or no? It's I don't tough. know either. I don't know. So, I think um, every team's going to look at him a little bit different. For people that put a lot of stock into the offseason, a lot of the concerns he's had with drops and stuff, I think he'll be there in the third. If teams trust more so the tape and what they've seen in game day and what he showed in pro day, um, then I think he's probably gone at you know the mid to late second round. Gotcha. But there's still a lot of names to love, like Luke McCaffrey, uh, Christian's right. brother. He's growing on me a lot. Roman Wilson, right. like you mentioned, that's out there. Um, there's a couple other names, even as like the fifth and sixth round, who could potentially be your Puka Nakua types. You know, maybe not 1,500 yeah. plus yard seasons or anything crazy, but like delivering a six to 800 yard season for us, which would still be excellent, I think is a huge plus. But uh, leaning into this as well is uh, – a lot of conversations have really centered around our coaching staff, right? Um, a lot of people have question marks about Nathaniel Hackett, especially considering we don't really know what his role is. We just know it looks like the, the team wants to hide him a bit. Aaron Rodgers will probably be at the forefront, which will be great for us. 
But when it comes to this wide receiver versus offensive line debate, I don't know where you guys lean if we stay at 10. Um, probably depends on who's there, of course. But if it's me, I'm looking more specifically at probably adding an offensive line, uh, kind of like we've heard Gunny mention before, because a lot of people don't seem to trust Keith Carter. I like him a little bit more than others just because I still think he was a fundamental part of that Tennessee Titans line being what it is, even if the players didn't like him um, or player. Uh, I haven't heard a ton of people outside of like Taylor Lewan, for example, outside of our little incident with likes and all of that. But I think it would make the most sense that if you want to try to help supplement this coaching staff, you give the highest floor player to a guy like Keith Carter, that it would be hard to mess up um, or, or, you know, fumble the development. And with Sean Jefferson, you've seen him develop some guys. You've seen him have success in the league. That's why he's probably going to be picking up assistant head coach duties for us. He will be able to work and mold up some of these later round prospects and maybe have some question marks, but still have all of the tools that you would want to ask for. So that's how I would lean. But uh, I don't know if you guys have kind of thought about and considered um, how that may play into you know some of the strengths on the offensive staff. I'm an offensive line for me. Yeah. I, I think, I think that I, it's hard with the wide receiver position developing. I know Gibson and Brownlee have done pretty good, but I think right now when you have Carter in the building, I, I, for me, it is offensive line right now. I don't know about you, Gunny. No, nah, it's, it's a hundred percent offensive line, man. And, and I get everybody likes playing Madden and everything. They love seeing all the cool stuff of the ball going 80 yards in the air and then scoring a lot of points, man. But it, this is the NFL. Uh, the trenches is where games are won and lost. Listen, we just watched the, the freaking Kansas city chiefs win the super bowl with no wide receiver one. No, there was no wide receiver one there. Don't let me forget. I had a question for you for that too, just because I, you brought up something on your show that interested me and I don't remember if the news had broke at the time or not, but go ahead. All right. Yeah. So, so for me, I'm, I'm all about offensive line because my thing is Aaron Rodgers has to be upright by any means necessary. If he's going to play quarterback and offensive coordinator for us, I would rather him have the time necessary in the pocket for him to go ahead and execute both of those duties. Um, You've seen him make Alan Lazard a uh, highest paying free agent last year. And we know he's a bum without Aaron Rodgers. So Aaron Rodgers is going to elevate the wide receivers, not only in this room, he's also going to have for the first time ever in his career two uh, first round talents to throw to on the same freaking team. And adding a guy in the third in this draft class, I couldn't feel more comfortable about what that potential wide receiver is going to accomplish with Aaron Rodgers as QB. So for me, without question, the move is offensive line. Uh, again, if it's one of those top three guys you want to go ahead and, and, and put next to uh, Garrett Wilson for the next freaking decade, I get it. I understand that. I'm not going to argue with the, about an Unze neighbors or MHJ. I get it. But after that, man, it, again, offensive line, offensive line, offensive line, offensive line, and then you can go ahead and give me a receiver in the third. Got to pack it up. You got to have backups always with offensive line backups. So, Gino, I'll let you kick this off, even though this uh, will tie into what I was thinking for uh, Gunny and what I've seen on this show. <clears throat> AFC pecking order, right? I think comfortably okay. you can consider us one of the top three teams overall. I've seen a lot of people still hyping up the Chiefs, right? And to Teagle's point and what I've seen in the chat at some point, it's not like their offensive line was the best. This is more a lot of that Patrick Mahomes magic that's happening there. But – also, if you guys didn't see, they have that whole drama with probably their only real productive receiver last year, Rasheed Rice, who seems like he's going to be out of the picture. So, yeah, they pretty much. And I don't think they made but one wide receiver move in the offseason. I can't remember who it is. Uh, Marquise Brown. They, Marquise and they Brown. cut okay. Scantling as well. So not yeah. a huge move. Even for us, when we're considering him, we thought like, all right, maybe slot uh, starting slot receiver. Um, and we hope he can stay healthy. So. Uh, could be great with Mahomes over there, but do you guys think they are still leading the pecking order here, or uh, is everybody else kind of moving up a notch? I think in some variation, at, at least just specifically for AFC, you're looking at Ravens, you have to consider because they have Mahomes, the Chiefs, and then I would honestly say us. I don't know who on paper realistically has a better starting unit on both sides of the ball, as well as some better depth as key positions specifically on the defense than us. I'm only looking at uh, – uh, so you're talking about the whole entire AFC, right, not AFC mm -hmm. East, correct? I think that it, that my top five, and this is not in any particular order, it's going to be 
it, for me, it's the it's the Chiefs, Jets, Browns, Ravens, and Texans. Those are my top five. No in particular order, though. Just top five for me. Fair play. Wait, so you you, you have who in your in, top in five? All, all of the all of the AFC top five. You have it, 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 not not it, not any not any order. Just just saying: Chiefs, Jets, Browns, Texans, and Ravens. Yeah, I'm I'm not gonna lie to you, man. Pound for pound, I don't think there's any other team in the in in the NFL that has more talent. I'm I I'll be the first. I'll say it. People are gonna think I'm crazy, but in terms of of individual accolades, right? Individual talents. I think the New York Jets has one of the if not it's not if it's not the deepest roster, the only ones I would even consider are are in the same breadth of of talent is going to be the the Browns and the 49ers. The Chiefs don't have a better roster than we do. They don't. They they just have Andy Reid and they have Patrick Mahomes. Um I I don't believe the the Eagles have a better roster than we do. Uh, in fact, I think they're going to fall off quite a bit come come this year. We saw the fall off already happen last year after freaking Zach Wilson kind of put them into a a bit of a spin cycle um, and a decline. But losing a guy like a Jason Kelsey, I think people are going to realize just how impactful the, the the IQ of their offensive line is. The the pretty much the the mastermind or the force behind the tush push. Um, I, I think they're going to take some steps backwards. I think their coach is an emotional wreck. I'm not a big fan of Nick Sirianni either. Uh, I think he's just a, a, a big crybaby that throws tantrums that happens to have a clipboard and, and he runs an NFL an NFL team. So in terms of best roster pound for pound, the New York Jets roster, man, it's again, <laughs> I hate I have to keep saying this, but if they could stay healthy, yeah, I, yeah. I don't see any team really matching up uh, pound for pound with this roster. If they could stay healthy, it's it's just it's that it's that exactly. impressive what they've done. Um the Kansas City Chiefs roster is I don't I, people are like, oh man, their 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 team is so much no, their team is not better. Their team is not better. Their coaching is better and their quarterback is elite. That's that's the difference. That's that's it. In terms of we have better running backs, we have better wide receivers, we have a better defense, we have um a better offensive line special now. Teams. Right, best better special teams. No, team wise, I don't know if I look at it and, and can say with, with a straight face, like, oh yeah, man, the Jets are not yeah, uh, a top, the thing. top roster in terms of individuals, in terms of pound for pound talent, um, in the NFL. I, I, the Chiefs don't even come close, in my opinion. But when you got the freaking head coach slash offensive genius that is Andy Reid, and you have a guy like Patrick Mahomes that can execute, yeah, nah, you get the nod because <laughs> those outweigh um, everything else, right? The two most important positions in in the sport is your coach and, of course, your quarterback. And the Kansas City Chiefs have that, like, far and away the best in the league. Touche. I mean, yeah, I don't I don't think there's going to be too much varying opinion on there. I do I do think the hardball effect with the Chargers is a, a dark horse option. Um, <laughs> I, I wouldn't count them out by any means. I know the talent isn't necessarily um, all there, but they do have still a, a pretty good quarterback in Herbert. Um, they still have a pretty solid running game uh, and depth options there. Wide receiver's going to take a hit, but this is the draft for them to try to rebuild there. You also know they're going to be a running team under them. They still still do have some pretty good pieces on defense with Khalil Mack, Derwin James yeah. being over there. I think they yeah. re-signed the safety that I wanted during the offseason. Um, I can't remember his name now, but I think he's their starting strong safety. Um, but, yeah, nonetheless, I think they'll be a dark horse candidate for sure. Um, but I think we're coming up on wrapping things up here. If you guys had to rattle off how you're attacking the draft at each position right now, uh, what do we got? Seven picks. Where are you going in each round? Assuming no trades. Ooh. So for me, round one is going to be offensive line. Round three is going to be wide receiver. Wide four will be potentially another wide receiver that might fall that had a, a, a top two round freaking grade on him. The other fourth rounder, I'm going with freaking a, a backup quarterback. Um, I think the guy right now that's really kind of like jumped off the board for me. Well, it's Rattler, but I don't think Rattler's going to be there in the fourth, so I'm going to go with uh, Pratt. If if he's there, I think that he's the guy you, you take a chance on. He's just behind Aaron Rodgers and Tyrod Taylor, learn the game. Uh, then we're in the sixth round, right, because we're going to have a fifth rounder? Mm -hmm. 
Yep. Then in the sixth round, we're going safety. I think you go ahead and you bring in another safety. You got to can contribute on special teams, um, potentially go ahead and play some spot snaps if necessary. And again, Char Clark coming off of the, the uh, ACL injury. We don't know how slow he's going to be getting going into the season. So rather be safe than sorry, you bring in the safety. And then uh, for Mr. Irrelevant, man, um, honestly, man, running back. I guess you just grab, you know, the, the best potential running back that's that's on the board. Uh, and I love Lad McConkey. That dude's a freaking freak of nature. I love him, Johnny. That's one of my favorite receivers in this draft. Uh, but I think he's going to go potentially late first, early second. So I don't know if he's going to be available to us in the third, unfortunately. But, yeah, you go running back with that last overall pick, um, bringing somebody that could potentially dispel, you know, uh, Izzy and, and, and Brees Hall from time to time. Maybe it's going to be one of the bigger guys that can go ahead and be the goal, a goal line freaking uh, running back or potentially a, a blocker as well on passing downs. So, yeah, um, that's the route that I would take in terms of, of filling out the rest of this roster. If I heard correctly, that meant only one offensive lineman, right? I did. I said offensive line in, in my first. But if you went with our second, fourth rounder, an interior offensive lineman, I'm not mad at that either. That that makes sense to me. Touche. I was curious. I know most people try to, like, double. I've even seen people triple dip in some of these mock drafts. Gino, where are you at with it? First round, offensive line, no, sec no second round pick, thir third round wide receiver, fourth round uh, quarterback, fifth round offensive line, sixth round safety, and the last two running back tied to tight end. Running back tight end, touche. Um, because I'm looking at that because I know people want to get a linebacker, but I'm looking at the linebacker position to where someone could get cut in the summer, scoop them up, maybe. I'm, I'm only looking back because there's so much that I think could get cut and we could either get a potential running back or linebacker during that time. <coughs> Who the hell is – oh, Tavondra Sweat. Yeah, I wouldn't uh, – if I remember correctly, Tavondra Sweat is also the guy that just recently got charged with uh, – think some kind of gun he, yeah yeah he did like yeah so yeah he, he'll he probably be there right now hanging into like right the fourth fifth round like, i wouldn't take a shot guys that are dumb like this i don't tend yeah. to really I'll pass yeah. on about like no you don't Quinn need that probably the only example i've heard people try to argue with me about this one but this was after we had already drafted him it was an incident in the airport where the airport was misunderstood mm -hmm. uh, or he didn't know the law excuse me in that particular area in like alabama or something crazy Nonetheless, um, I will go tackle in round one. As mentioned, no second rounder. Third rounder, I am – I would go guard. I'm trying to think. In the third good. round? Yeah. I think Over I would receiver? Guard. Yep. Because the fourth round is honestly where I think you're going to still be able to find a guy like McCaffrey. Um, there's five guys that I'm generally comfortable saying are going to be in their fourth round that I would take uh, that I think will still be good ads. And a couple of very skill sets, two of them are more slot guys. The other three um, have split decently enough between boundary and slot. So I'm comfortable there. We'll probably have to do a mock draft or something. We'll we'll, we'll, ch we'll chat it out there on one of these next shows. But yeah, next we'll week. Probably go tackle. Draft. I will go guard also because I don't love the rest of our interior depth. Uh, Hanson isn't going to cut it, and uh, I think you can upgrade from um, Xavier Newman. I think he's the other guy for us. Uh, tackle guard wide receiver in the fourth. Uh, no fifth rounder. Sixth, I would look safety. I would look defensive tackle. Sixth round, I would look defensive tackle. Seventh rounder. <sighs> Seventh rounder, I would probably look and see if we have a quarterback we still like there. Uh, and there's an HBCU guy that I like that I can't remember his name. Um, and then you still might have, like, I'm seeing Sam Hartman a lot and all those guys. I don't really love a ton of the guys once you get past Jordan Travis. But I think there's two or three with enough of a skill set that you can maybe hope become a, a high quality uh, backup for us, which I think is all we really should be asking for if we pick for anybody after the fourth round. All of this Brock Purdy nonsense, it's not going to happen with this coaching staff. Like, No, it's it, not. We, we have to be realistic. Like, Find the guy that's probably most likely to be a great or you know solid game manager for us 
for right. after Aaron, Aaron Rodgers length, uh, call it a day. For, right, for my Bowers boys, to... right? For my Bowers boys, I'm going to go ahead and give y'all a name, right? Theo Johnson. Theo Johnson, to me, if we wanted to go tight mm, in this draft. Penn State guy. Yep. Uh, yes, correct. Yeah. Theo Johnson, to me, I think will probably be the best tight end out of this entire freaking draft class. Um, and it's Penn State not because, does well. Say it again? Penn State tight ends do well after yeah. about that second year. They, yeah. they Listen, well. dude is six foot six, 257 yeah. pounds. I think he ran like a four five forty. Um, and if you look at his quarterback rating when targeted in his last two years, it's the highest of all the tight ends. It's higher than some of the elite wide receivers we're talking about, too, in the entire on all of college football. The dude doesn't let his quarterbacks down. Unfortunately, he wasn't utilized enough, in my opinion, in his system. Uh, Penn State doesn't really run through the tight end. Right. But if you guys really want to see a tight end because you guys, you know, the, the Bowers boys. That's who I would go for. If you want to go ahead and go for him with with a fourth rounder, you bring in a Theo Johnson. I think he's probably going to be a fifth round, sixth round guy. But if you want to go ahead and reach and get him in the fourth, Theo Johnson. That's the tight end. That's the I one think we he might want. be going before then. To be honest, I mean he he might be, but I, I, it's it's so quiet, man. I haven't seen a lot of people talk about him at all, and I'm like, man, how, this guy is a. I think he's underrated. I think a lot of he's people so don't look at him, especially because he's probably one of the better blockers out of the yep. entire tight end class. He can block. And he has hands. He's, he's really like a Jeremy Ruckert. He just really hasn't had enough opportunities to go out there and to show showcase his skill set. Exactly. Exactly. But when he does get the opportunity, the guy doesn't let his quarterbacks down. He 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 makes plays. So for me, that's that's the guy. If you we all if y'all want tight end so bad, not a not a weapon, but a, a tight end, right? Not making up a position because we don't know how to describe a player. Uh, Theo Johnson is the guy. That will be the tight end that I think you bring into this um, into the fold, and he can go ahead and be an impact guy from jump, whether it's blocking, catching the ball, running routes, high IQ guy as well. I'm a big fan, big fan of Theo Johnson. Touche. Cool. What nonsense are they chatting in here? Oh, this is just Tigo. It's just Tigo, bro. <laughs> Look, Tigo, Dane, Johnny, all of them. If we run into another situation where, God forbid, we do see some of these guys start falling like flies again, you never know. Nobody's you never be know. Pissed about us taking Four that out of the playing. last five years, we've had double digit rotations on our offensive line. But for some reason, all of a sudden this year, it's all fixed. Like somehow, <laughs> some way, the football gods, you know what? That's enough. We're done. Don't worry about offensive line. Just get a wide receiver to go ahead and pretty much get all your troubles. I, I mean, again, I get it if it's one of those top three guys. But after that, everybody else is is is, is, is going to have a question mark here and there. Just just give me the the for sure offensive lineman to keep my quarterback up right. And if and if it's not Aaron Rodgers, if he, you know, what I'm saying, if he winds up going down for any reason, knock on wood. Again, I think having Tyrod Taylor back there, who tends to take a little longer of getting rid of the ball, having mm -hmm. quality offensive lineman options in front of him, the season's not actually dead. We legitimately yes. could potentially still go ahead and see at least the playoffs and the freaking drought of having gotten there with Tyrod Taylor behind a quality offensive line. So yeah, man, I just I can't I just I can't get behind the. I can't get behind the, the 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 Bowers boys at ten. I just I just to me makes zero sense. But to each their if own. If he had more of a traditional skill set, I wouldn't be mad whatsoever. Like, yeah, right. positional value right. still may right. not be great. Not that. But I just don't. Talent is talent, right? So if we're really saying that he's one of these top ten kind of guys uh, at his position, you know, maybe he'll finish Hall of Fame all time. Cool, by all means. But being realistic about how long this coaching staff will probably stay, assuming we have. The successful season we're going to have, he's going to end up being a wasted pick for us. Like facts, you know, he might not be Slumville tight end production, but he's not going to hit the level that he should ideally have if he was in another offense like the Ravens, like the Chiefs, not even top tier guys like the Chargers. The Raiders use their tight ends pretty well. Like yep. you need to have somebody that has a little bit better of a fundamental understanding. And I already mentioned this before, Nathaniel Hackett. Hasn't showed anything in his history that he even knows how to use traditional tight ends at an elite level. So getting a specialized guy just doesn't make sense to me. But uh, that's the cherry on top, y'all. We got we got uh, <laughs> we got lies to get back to. Um, I think at some <laughs> point <laughs> we will try to. Um, I think like we did last year, we will try to run through like a, a mock draft before the draft kicks off. 
That was dope last year. I don't remember who everybody voted as having the best draft class, uh, but I thought Gino was maybe closest to the picks or he came away with it or something like that. In terms Either of the accuracy fun. of the draft, yeah. Yeah. Gino hit on, on several. JD, it's man. Also, it's the guru over <laughs> there, right? But over there from my screen. That's, <laughs> that's the guru. Pay attention, y'all. Um, Dano, appreciate you. I seen, uh, I think Wild Wave mentioned Wild uh, Wave's right, uh, you've been recruiting guys to our trifecta of channels. Yeah, Much Dano's appreciated. a dog, bro. He's, he's, I mean, who needs freaking um, marketing when you got Dano, bro? Dano <laughs> is that dude, dog. I, I'm pretty right. positive he's responsible for at least freaking 40 new followers on my channel alone in the last couple of weeks, man. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to Dano for, for doing Dano, God. <laughs> Dano's got an army. He's got an army. Then he, then he bonesy every way. It's, it, everyone follows them. I, I respect it. I respect it. Best community out there, right? Big facts. Definitely. Definitely. Big facts. Definitely. Check it out. Well, we greatly appreciate you guys. Welcome back again. As mentioned, this is uh, kind of our intro to season three of us kicking things off. So it should be a lot of fun. A couple of weeks till draft still uh, highlighting some of what we mentioned earlier. You know, Gunny has his draft party kicking off. Um, also has his main live stream. He's kind of bringing back in uh, the hangar hangouts um, Tuesday nights. Um, 7.30 Central. Yeah. Yep. 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 Um, and then Gino, he's still everywhere. Uh, Jets Evening Brew is kind of your main uh, Jets content side, but I'll let you yep. let you guys yep. kick off anything else you got. Yep, Jets Evening Brew. Come back uh, day before um, the the day before the draft, and then um, yeah, I'm always got something else cooking with the the Ger the Germany Jets and the UK Jets, and then uh, here take flight squad on Fridays, baby, season three. We're back. <laughs> Boys are back in town, boys are back in town. <laughs> hey, we appreciate y'all coming through. We'll see y'all next Friday or on one of the other various collaborations we're doing. Appreciate y'all coming through. We'll catch you again. Go Jets! Explanation point. <laughs>